Oral Gibbs Live. We come to you live here from World Star Studios at Amsterdam Shopping Center. And with me this evening, I have the leader of the UP Party, Member of Parliament, Mr. Thigo Halligo. How are you doing, sir? Oh, well, good evening, Oral. I just want to um, start off the evening by thanking you, first of all, for being on the program. I want to wish you, um, Jessica, uh, the, the kids, and all the uh, televiewers out there a very happy um, and prosperous uh, New Year. Uh, 2017. And again, thank you for having me on the program. Thank you for being here, and all the best to you and your family for this new year. Thank you. Now, it's, it's been quite an interesting year because uh, I know uh, just a few months ago you was going to form a coalition government with the NA, and what happened? Well, um, you know, Oral, first of all, if we go back to the uh, 2016 election, it was a uh, a very um, interesting election. It was, as a matter of fact, to me, one of the most um, quietest elections um, that we've um, had in the, in the recent years in St. Martin. As a matter of fact, I, I could go back. Elections have changed quite a lot um, since the days of my grandfather. And, um, you know, a, a lot of people uh, are nervous on, on how to campaign. And uh, I could tell you for, for one, uh, to my person, uh, you know, I did not campaign the way we campaigned uh, before. I did not uh, go out and meet the people like I did before because uh, these days, or you, you don't even know who to trust anymore um, and who you talk to and who you meet in the street um, because I'm very sure you, you know of what has been going on and, and hopefully we can discuss that too. But you asked the question about the, um, the government that was formed on the, uh, the day after, let's call it, the, oh. the, the morning after the election. Um, I'll tell you something, or you know, um, if we go back to, to many years, you would know that um, the, the present leader of the National Alliance and, and my grandfather, I think they've never really even spoke to each other, so it goes back quite a long way. Mm. Um, I will say that I had a, a great uh, relationship with the um, um, the deceased um, Mr. Vance James Jr., man I respect very much, um, and uh, I had the opportunity of working with him on many times, even when we were not in government. And I could tell you it's a far different uh, cry to, to the present leader of the National Alliance. But nonetheless, um, you know, within the party the, um, and for the, the issue of St. Martin, uh, we signed an agreement, um, being the biggest party. Uh, in St. Martin after the 2016 election, we accepted a lot less than what we should have as the, um, the largest party, but nonetheless, it was for St. Martin. And, um, we, you know, we hoped that uh, this, uh, that coalition would have worked. A lot of people, um, you know, sent me messages, called in, and, uh, you know, and stated, you know, Theo, this is, this is a great thing for St. Martin. Um, a lot of, um, uh, you know, the businesses uh, abroad, uh, the cruise industry, the airline industry, all were, were very happy as well um, to see the two biggest parties come together. And, you know, they felt that St. Martin was finally moving into the, um, the right direction. And then, you know, we were working out um, the, uh, the coalition agreement. We signed and we finalized the, um, the governing accord. So the governing program was finished. A lot of uh, work went into that. Members of both parties um, actually worked, and, and I thank them uh, very much for, for, their, for their work, because you, you really took the two parties' uh, manifestos and you put them together. Like I said, a lot of work went into it. I personally was there. Um, the leadership of the NA was there as well. Uh, we shook hands, we signed, uh, everything was going well. Until the Thursday, the evening, um, right before St. Martin's Day, was the last time that um, we spoke, um, Frankie Myers and I spoke with the, um, the leader of the National Alliance, the Prime Minister, and we went through the, um, the reports mm -hmm. from um, the Public Prosecutor's Office and the um, Secret Service of St. Martin, and in those reports um, were displayed to us, showed us uh, what the issues were. <clears throat> And I, and I told the, uh, the National Alliance leader, when, you, when I read uh, my report in particular, I said, you know, it is, it is interesting of, of the comments that have come out about it. And we, we sort of even laughed about it, that most of these comments are actually what the National Alliance has been preaching to the population about my person in particular. And now, you know, that shows up in reports. So, and, uh, you know, one thing I've learned, too now, Oral, you know, 
there was a saying that all politics is local. And I could remember the uh, present minister in Curacao, uh, Susie Roman, I used to, um, you know, have a, a tit for tat, and mm -hmm. we would always discuss, Teo, don't worry, we're friends, uh, because what happens in Curacao is in Curacao, what happens in Saman is in Samadhi. But that's not the case anymore, or else. So the issue is whatever is said here now um, goes in Eri straight to the public prosecutor's office. So whatever we say on the street, whatever you say on the road, um, is now, you know, cases can be uh, immediately taken against uh, the person. So at the end of the day, you know, when I mentioned that, I said, well, you know, um, Mr. Prime Minister, the issue is, you know, I am not the person to get up every um, time there's a, there's a meeting of parliament and go over all of the things that I hear about you or hear about your party and uh, start slandering your name. And perhaps maybe then I should start to do this as well, because too often all guns are pointed at me, and, um, you know, I've, I've become the, the boo man um, um, for the Dutch and, and for you all, and, and that's how you basically got into the position that you have. Anyway, uh, the agreement was that we would have met with the governor um, the following week after the holidays with St. Martin Day, and, um, you know, I had the opportunity, then I waited on a call on Monday. Um, that never happened, and I believe it was the um, Tuesday we heard that there were talks going on uh, with the National Alliance and the, um, the others, uh, the other parties. And again, we stayed firm with the commitment of the UP and the National Alliance. And then on Wednesday, we got a WhatsApp, um, Franklin Myers and myself, stating that they had formed a government, which basically from the sources that we had, had started already over the weekend. And that's um, how the, the cookie crumbled um, oral. Um, there was no difference of um, opinion on the governing program. Um, people asked me outside, yeah, but why you didn't submit new names for um, ministers? Uh, we were never even uh, at that discussion at all, oral. Um, one of the points that I, I stated to him, it, you know, that there should be very valid points, um, you know, that why, um, why the, 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 the ministers were not going. But again, like I said, for the sake of St. Martin, um, we would have discussed other ministers. They are, uh, we stated before, others on the list could also um, be part of. If Theo Heiliger, again, is the problem for um, the Dutch government, the public prosecutor's office, and, and others, then I would have stepped aside again um, for the sake of St. Martin. And it is it is basically come down to that order. So uh, I've heard a lot of people say that you and uh, the, the deputy leader, MP Myers, failed the test. What really happened? Yeah, but over what is what is failing? You understand the, the, the question is in the in the in the screening process is that you get a report from um, the, the, the Secret Service of the island, and you get a, a, a report from the Public Prosecutor's Office, okay? Uh, the Public Prosecutor's Office, and, and that has already been made public, so I will, I will say that one in particular, said that I offered um, Romain Laville um, uh, monies to be able to bring down a government. Let me tell you something. I have not had any discussions with Romain Laville um, and I will state this one straight publicly, without someone being present. All the discussions that we had after he left the party and broke the government, and then uh, we formed back with him, I believe it was um, 2014 or 2013, was held with others around me. Mm -hmm. And the only discussions we had about what was going to happen for the country and about portfolio um, division. I never discussed anything. Um, to him about anything financially, and I will stand by that at all at all times. And I never have even uh, bought Mr. Laville or even a, a Coca-Cola or a bottle of water. Um, they continue to um, state that um, I did this, and probably will continue to bring charges against me for that. And God knows what else um, they will continue to come up. But oral this this goes and it dates back to, um, you know, 2000, before 2014. When you look back at the case against um, my uncle, that is very um, open, um, where it was accused that he's been accused of vote buying. Um, first case, uh, he was acquitted. 
But that first case, when he was acquitted, the, the judge basically, uh, three days before election, said, yes, but why don't you bring the up leader mm -hmm. into the court? And you remember that was front page news. And as a matter of fact, that hit the news in Holland. Um, but Theo is out there buying votes. I was nowhere around. Um, we had no part of no discussion um, with anybody. As a matter of fact, like I always do, I was in, uh, meeting people, um, greeting people, going out to see people. Anyway, that case went on. You know that three days before the election, <laughs> that was the front page news. Immediately thereafter, um, the case quieted down. As soon as another election was announced, boom, it came out at, at that time. And at least the, the judge at that time um, acquitted my uncle for any um, charges itself. In addition, that they could not find enough um, position that I knew about what was going on. Or, well, this is a, a, a witch hunt that has been going on for the last uh, 30 years against um, not only me, but my grandfather, my family. And I'm, and I'm giving you yeah. um, straight evidence of that as well. Um, for the case that was brought against um, Mr. Silvio Matsu, I'll give you an example. I was, I was called in and, and being questioned that as party leader of the op, I um, should know um, of what has been going on with vote buying. Now, Oral, this is, this is the most unbelievable um, statement and set of questions ever. And it, it goes to show you that they're on a fishing expedition to make sure to do whatever it is to uh, indict me and make sure that I'm involved in something. If you go and you look at um, the case of Tochi Myers, okay? Um, who is Tochi Myers? Tochi Myers is the brother of Franklin Myers. Who is Tochi as well? Tochi is the husband of the president of the United People's Party, Miss Sylvia Myers, okay? Do you think it is um, just coincidence that they go and they also now grab um, Mr. Tochi Myers during the process of also the formation of government? No. It was, again, to um, embarrass, uh, to continue to try to put this veil over the, um, the United People's Party, and to, again, ensnare um, that they could find something with me and Mr. Tochi Myers and, and all this. And, you know, I'll tell you this. I, um, I, I, I really um, said um, God's strength was given to Tochi for, you know, lasting a whole month incarceration and having to go through those questions. Um, I can go on um, with the former Minister of Finance, or a former Minister of Finance of the UP Party. And he went through years of court cases, thousands of dollars being paid in, uh, in legal fees, and at the end of the day, was acquitted. But do you see, do you think the man is the same like what he was before? And we're here, and, and I'm giving you all examples of how the, uh, my person, the people around me, and the United People's Party has been prosecuted, persecuted. And, and I'll go back to going to, if you look back in the period of um, 1940 to 1945, in the days of the Nazi occupation of Europe, um, Hitler had a, um, a group called the Gestapo. And the Gestapo was basically there to continue to put fear into the population and continue to harass anybody that stood against Hitler. And, it, it, and if you look at St. Martin today, and what, especially what we've gone through last year, and probably will continue throughout this year, raids at uh, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning, um, uh, coming in your house, uh, 20, 30 uh, men coming in your house, people you don't know ransacking your house, um, holding you basically hostage, um, letting you out, and continue to, to go back in your house two, three, four times after. Uh, you look at the case with the, with the bunk campers. Um, the issue with the bunk campers is the issue of selling um, land, economic rights. Well, guess what, Oral? <laughs> go by the notaries today. That is still continuing, even though that case is there. So when you you, you, you went on to um, um, uh, beat the dog, you find a stick. This is continuing in St. Martin. And you know what? We as a population, 
sit down and say, yeah, these, um, these good people are in their rights, should lock up all the politicians, lock up Teo, lock up this one. Uh, we are not standing up um, in St. Martin, but guess what, you know? Uh, today it's me, um, all right, we get him out of the picture, anybody else that stands up, anyone else that comes up with great ideas or good ideas for the country, and you don't um, bow under the right pressure, well, you too will be dealt with. Um, you take the, 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 the farmer, um, director of the airport. Um, this thing is going on six years. Six years. Uh, you know, you go into the, the lady's house two, three times. Um, you, you shake up the entire family. Or, well, we, are, we are destroying people's family. I, I read an article from the uh, justice minister. He's into prevention. Not, um, you know, um, going after people, <laughs> but <laughs> that's the Minister of Justice. That have nothing to do with the public prosecutor's office and basically the Dutch government. You will, we will continue, that they will continue to go after um, people, in, in particular, anyone associated um, with my person or the United People's Party, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, will continue to be persecuted and prosecuted till the destruction of the party. And I, I'm very sure that, um, you know, they have been partially successful in it, that we, we lost two seats in the last election. And, uh, you know, uh, people are scared um, um, to be associated um, with us. And, and I, I rightfully tell uh, people now, you know, listen, uh, you, you have to be careful if you're my friend, because if you're my friend um, or my associate or, or um, an acquaintance even, um, you know, your, your phone is going to be tapped, you're, um, you're going to continue to be probably followed and um, your life is going to be in a, in a total um, um, different case. And, and Oral, I have seen this with my grandfather. I have seen that the cause of what it did to him led to an early demise of my grandfather, a great man, a great mind. And you're, you're destroying. And, and these people that I've mentioned as well, you had the, the, the director of finance of, of Winnie. Uh, you know, thank goodness that he was um, 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 acquitted as well. You had um, the director of marketing of the, the Tourist Bureau. You don't even see um, the gentleman anymore around. He's been destroyed. You, you don't, you don't yeah. see him. You, they've destroyed people's lives. And guess what? There are no consequences for destroying people's lives. Um, um, there no one calls for um, any position of investigate why these people were destroyed, why are we allowing this to continue, but we just continue rolling over people like this, you know, this big grating machine continue to destroy people. And why, you know what, in St. Martin, our problem is, um, we have this um, syndrome, oh yes, let us knock down our own people. And it's a big problem that we have on this island, a big problem. You know, um, you mentioned names, and I, 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 I saw um, the former Minister of Finance uh, recently, and you can see the, the effects of that still on him. He's not the same person either anymore. No, no, he's not at all. And you know, Earl, you, you go into things. The, the, the guy was, I mean, you know, he's a Samadna, born Samadna, was given the opportunity to be Minister of Finance, came up with some very great um, programs we were going to. Um, decrease um, income tax, decrease the profit tax the way it is normal in, in the world. Uh, he found a firm, Taxan, um, to not only do the laws, but discuss the, the financial position. Um, instead of having these kind of taxes that we talked about, we looked at a, a value-added tax instead, uh, was on a right move um, to change St. Martin and things like that. And what do we have today? You know, he was ridiculed, the up party was ridiculed. Um, yeah, we're spending too much money. Guess what has just been approved in the budget of 2017? 10 million to now go and revamp the tax office. So you tell me we could have been years ahead of other islands, but what we did, we destroyed the program that was there, and we destroyed the man behind the program that was there. Again, we continue just to destroy people, Laura. And again, you know, People um, come up to me and say, to you, you're, you're, you know, you're, you've got to be a strong opposition. It is not in me. I have never been brought up to go and rip down a man. And I've got to start to learn or to also get into the, the, the blame game, because guess what? It has worked very well 
um, for the National Alliance and its leader, because I can assure you, Aura, without a Dutch intervention, without the public prosecutor's intervention, there is no way, and I tell him straight, there is no way that a National Alliance leader could beat me in the polls in, in St. Martin. No way. He must rely on outside help to be able to beat me in the polls um, and, and said mad. And there was really fair and free elections in our country. There would be a far different um, position in government. Today. But, but have they ever beaten you at the polls? Uh, he personally? They've never beaten uh, you. I, I can't remember my 20 something years, probably in, in, in the beginning days. But, but you know, the thing I asked because the people, and then I, I said it one time on, on the radio show um, that you're the most loved politician, even among people who have voted for you. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is that people look at you as a person result oriented, want to get things done. But what has happened? What made you think that? What? what What's the real motive here? Because, you know, I, I remember your grandfather and the problems back in the early 1990s. Mm -hmm. I know it because I was very closely connected to him, so I know and saw what went on. Yep. It was really, really bad. Right. And now I'm seeing the same thing again uh, some 20-something years later. That's right. You know, already you, you asked two questions, and I'm going to answer the, the last one first with my grandfather. You know, when I was, uh, when I entered um, the political field officially in 1995. I thought back, so well, you know, the, probably the issue with my grandfather and the Dutch is that he didn't use Dutch companies to build the airport or the harbor, okay? And I told it to uh, the Dutch parliamentarians that are here. I said, you all listen to my opposition, uh, that Theo's involved in this and involved in that, and, you know, so now you've set the dogs out on me. Let them loose. Destroy him. I said, at the end of the day, the first phase of the harbor was built by one of the largest Dutch companies ever, Ballas Nadam. The second phase, the second pair of the harbor was built by Ballas Nadam International, same Dutch company. If you look at the airport, MNO, um, MNO Vervat built the airport, Dutch company. Uh, the, the bridge was built by Volker Steven. A Dutch company. The only thing that we asked in, in, in those projects is that locals be involved in the project. And I will continue um, to stay that oral until the days that I am out of government. Locals must have the opportunity to be able to provide um, labor, materials, equipment to that. I've learned that one um, from my grandfather. Um, but they continue because there's no work that is ever given out. Um, Front Street, Back Street, um, the roads in Middle Region, Saugrawad, St. Peter's, all of those things were also done by um, contracts that were derived with Dutch companies. Uh, MNO Vervat, Janssen de Jong that owns Winner Roads in St. Martin, all done with Dutch um, 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 companies, paid for by St. Martin people, okay? Locals, of course, involved in these companies, don't get me wrong, but the issue is, what is it that you're really saying that I'm so involved with? But guess what? All the work that was given out was given to Dutch companies. But yet, you're looking at, I did not carry out procedures right, I did not do these things right, and all that. Oh, well, let me tell you something. If you carry out the procedures on this island to the fullest, not a soul, not a little local company would get a job in, the, in this poor island. And now, I want to now go back to the first question that you, you asked. You know, I have been brought up uh, very much in um, uh, the days of my grandfather. And that's why a lot of people say, Teo, you involved in old school politics. And we need a new politician involved in new school politics. And, uh, you know, we got to go and vote our own mind. And, you know, all right, good. When I go out, anywhere I go out, I have been taught from my mother um, that you always greet people, you have respect for people. Um, you listen to people, and you do your best to help people. That's something not only my mother instilled in me. Um, as a matter of fact, as a child, she beat it into me, too. <laughs> and my grandfather driving around with him and seeing him with people, I do. Or all up until 2015, I will tell you um, that Theo would help anyone that I can. In the last year, 
and seeing what has been transpiring in St. Martin, I will be honest with you. I really um, answer people that I don't know. I really um, go to see the people that have supported me. I really answer now um, messages, and now you should ask, <laughs> and why not to you? You know, I had a meeting, I asked for one purposely with the, before the election, with the prosecutor's office of Samar. I said, please define to me what is considered vote buying. As a matter of fact, we called in the Minister of Justice, please tell us what is vote buying. Basically, he read, read exactly what the law states, okay, which to me is very ambiguous, uh, open-ended, uh, open, open to, to the end of the day. So, Oral, what is it? I go and I, you know, see one of my supporters for many years, little old lady, many of them are good little friends of mine. And you sit down and you see her glasses falling off and broke it. And I say, listen, I'm going to take here, here's a little hundred dollar, go and buy a pair of glasses. That's what buying. I didn't ask the lady to vote for me now, all right. But because I'm in the house and I see that her glass is broken, her glasses, her reading glasses, and I say, here's a little hundred dollar, go and get your glasses done, that's vote buying. Now, why I say I don't answer nobody? Because people have sent me, listen, I get requests, um, people traveling on the plane, they don't have enough money to pay the, you know, that $25 or $50 uh, fee for the luggage. Lord Theo, uh, take my daughters, please help me. I have people, Lord Theo, GB cut me off, uh, could you please help me? Um, Lord Theo, I can't pay for school fees and um, buy groceries. Lord Theo, I need a job. Lord Theo, please help me how to uh, fill in a taxi permit. And oral, these things in the past, not for election time. Theo is not only an ele uh, a politician that talks to people at election. It goes on all four years. The difference is, and, and that's the difference with me now, the old person, because I did that in my, my maybe second year of, of office, she will go out there and tell everybody, listen, I voting for Theo because whenever I ask him to help me, he helps me, I got my new pair of glasses. I did not tell her to go out and say these things, or else. Now, this is the problem that we have out there. You read the public prosecutor's um, 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 position in the papers, or you come out and tell us if anybody offered you anything. Now, somebody come and ask me something, and I say, well, I'm going, I'm going to try and help you out. Boom. Now, I'm, I'm involved um, in there, and now we got cases. I mean, the case with my uncle with the situation that he's gone through. It is over $30,000 in legal fees, oral. Okay, and, and this just goes on and on and on. And you can't, so you're frightened now mm -hmm. to help people in your own country. People that used to come to me in office, say, hey, oh, Lord, I need a, a, a taxi permit, or I want to request a piece of land, but how do you do it? That's our people, oral. You, that is our people. They know that they, 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 you are an elected official, and listen, it didn't matter if you voted for me or voted for somebody else, I would still do my best um, to help you. I personally would even help, you know, write up the request of how um, you're supposed to do it, or go get a document and say, listen, sit down there and let me go over it with you so that you don't make no mistakes, and you take it to the different offices that have to go around. What is wrong with these things? Well, this is something that has gone on in our um, system, our, our country, for years, for years. I mean, from the days of you fishing in the, in the village, you, you trade some fish for meat and things like that. This is going on in our system. Right now, you're being now prosecuted and prosecuted uh, if, you, if you help people <laughs> because it's not done like that in Holland. A politician in Holland can walk down the road oral and nobody would stop and tell him anything. You try to do that with me in St. Martin. You try to do that with me in St. Martin. My children, I have gone um, with them to other islands, and people come up to me and say, hey, Theo, how you doing? And my children would say, but Daddy, how you know people here? That's because of, the, uh, of how I am with people. And, and you know, it, is, it has hurted me to the point where 
if I'm an elected official and I can't help my own people, then why should I be an elected official? Or, or? And I'll get to the point where it does. I, if tomorrow election is called, I do not want to run anymore. I can tell you that you will not see my name on a list on any political party, including the United People's Party, because it is hurting me to the point where it is ridiculous to see that I cannot help people anymore because you're scared of continuing to be persecuted and prosecuted in your own country. And it hurts the family, your friends, and the people that rely on you. Well, how, how are you going to do that when, you know, uh, you're the most loved politician still on Zimbabwe and people still want to see you run? But, but Oral, let me tell you. I, um, I love the people of Saman. There is nothing more, and, I, and I've told that to them, too. I said, where can I go but Samad? Um, I have heard in, in, in certain things that I own land in Canada. Um, um, the size of Holland, I never <laughs> I say, well, that's the best one. The Prime Minister of St. Martin, on his way from Parliament, walks down, you know, the vendor's market. Mm. And the vendors, they are not me, I didn't tell them to say that. And I was walking with other members of parliament, so you can, you can ask them. And the, and the prime minister says, uh, they say, Mr. Marlin, Mr. Prime Minister, Lord, whatever you do, please just put Theo back in charge of tourism. Right? I didn't tell him to say this. You know, he tells the people. He says, yeah, I want Theo back in, in government. He's the one that owns the pair in Totolo. Now, you know, Oral, uh, and I'm going to tell you this. If I own the pair Totolo, there wouldn't only be 6,000, 600,000 passengers. There'd be a lot more, okay? I can tell you that. And I'm, I'm not being um, boastful about it. There'll be much more. The pr um, prime minister of Totola has now announced that the, he and the Chinese are going to build a $153 million airport in Totola. I have done, at my own expense, my own family's expense, have gone to see different islands to see what they offer that St. Martin does it. Not at no government expense. I ain't going on no big trips um, up and down the place in Europe. And I go to see uh, Caribbean islands and what they are offering the, the, the different um, categories. We are far behind our world because, yeah, what we're doing, we continuing to destroy um, the goose that laid the, the golden egg. And we continue to continue this prosecution and prosecution. We're going to see which businessman will want to continue um, to invest in our country. Very large companies, or that started out in Samadhan, have I understood moved their headquarters now to Anguilla. And I can tell you, it's going to continue. You're not going to see the kind of investment. Such as a, a very big insurance company, but I want to make sure that's official first before I say it. But I'll tell you something, those are, are, are big accounts to, to government. And if we don't start doing things that are actually changing the course of this country, then where are we going? What is there left to do? Oh. But, you know, to see, uh, when it was announced that the OP and the NA is going to form the next government, a lot of people said, I don't know if you heard this, but a lot of people said that um, they came to you because you was going to make it easier to get the Port of China built. <laughs> and that was, uh, did you hear something like that? Uh, you know, Oral, I, I, I heard so many different um, uh, positions of what uh, I would do and what I would help with do. Listen, I went in um, to that coalition. <laughs> we didn't even get a chance to make the coalition, but I went into that um, um, promise, let me put it that way, but a very open mind. Mm -hmm. And I was prepared to, um, uh, to live it out, no matter what. Um, others say, and um, again, against, you know, that the, 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 the little voice in your head that says, they don't trust him, don't trust him, don't trust him, don't trust him, and I continue to go against that little voice telling me, don't trust him, don't trust him, and did it for the love of Samaritan, of the country, because there were other offers to, to, to make the government, and, and we could have, and we did not move from the position, we stayed clear and we say the sound of mine. I'm speaking with the leader of the UP Party, MP Phil Halliger. And uh, you know, MP Halliger, taxes is a big, big problem, it's a big issue. Um, a lot of people complain that uh, we're the most expensive, the profit tax is an issue, and other taxes. How do you, how you feel about all this? But Oral, if you, if you listen to, um, like I said, the New Year's address of the Minister of Finance, um, 
I think after he says uh, Happy New Year, he tells you that, listen, you know, taxes are going to be coming down on um, uh, maybe not new taxes, but we're going to make sure enforce um, all of the, the, the people that haven't been paying taxes and if you've been running. And, you know, I have a, um, I was not there for the last um, final budget debate of Parliament, but a motion was passed there saying, listen, if you're going to try and take blood out of stone, mm -hmm. And you're, you're going to come after businesses at a time when the economy is in a, 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 um, a downward spiral that is, right now, nobody is seeing um, the, the light of day, okay? And you're going to want an outcome at the businesses, but then at least give them some reprieve as well. Again, what are you seeing out there now? The public prosecutor's office is basically heavily coming at you, <laughs> not a tax man, eh? the public prosecutor's office, of um, you're not being paying your fair share taxes. And I'm saying in the Netherlands, in Curacao, in the United States of America, they have given you the opportunity to say, listen, before we're coming down hard on you and before we, uh, we go and, and uh, come after you and everything like, like that, we give you a certain reprieve. One, you have X amount of time to uh, come up with your taxes, you have X amount of time to make sure bring your business up to standards, and we're going to also now announce how we're going to do this. Not from one day to the next, boom, boom, boom. If you look at um, the French side, I think their profit tax is half the profit tax of the Dutch side of St. Martin. Um, Let's not talk about Sinkits. Let us not talk about Anguilla or uh, income tax also is very different on, on those islands. That listen, Sinkits, half the merchants of Front Street are uh, in Sinkits. Okay? Half the merchants of Front Street are in Totola as well. They have tax breaks. Uh, they are doing extremely well on those islands, okay? And what uh, I'm telling you, Oral, um, every year for Christmas time, two days or two days before Christmas, I usually walk down, and in every um, store I try to go in there. Uh, it takes me two or three days because I usually have a little glass of champagne with everyone. I'll tell you again, I was scared to walk through Front Street um, the day before Christmas and the day, two days before Christmas. I sat in one owner of a store for nearly two hours and there was only one couple in there, or other. And if you ask, of course, you know the front street merchants, business is always bad. But if you yourself now um, look at the kind of turnover that these merchants have had uh, this year, um, or sorry, last year, versus what it was before, and there is no discussion from government of how they intend um, to turn around uh, the economy, are you going to go uh, discussions with the cruise line, what are you going to offer them? They've already signed with Totola, or well, they have built um, Carnival Corporation, has just opened a pair last year in the Dominican Republic, Puerto Plata. They just spent $85 million in that port. You don't think they're going to send their own passengers there? Um, the cruise ship, the Vista, the brand new ship of Carnival, guess what? They went to they were, they were doing um, cruises of five days. You know what ports they went to? Grand Turk, which is, guess what? Owned by Carnival Corporation. And they went to Puerto Plata, owned by Carnival Corporation. They didn't touch no other Caribbean island. You know that Carnival is um, about to sign, or has signed, you know, um, the island Tortuga, right off right. of um, um, Haiti, and, and for the sake of your, um, your viewers, it is the island where the famous movie Pirates of the Caribbean was filmed. They're going to build a port in um, Tortuga. And I could tell you something what Carnival is going to do. Um, they are going to build uh, like a Pirates of the Caribbean themed um, park there in, in, uh, in, in the port. That is just logical. If you see what they are doing on these islands, and it took us nearly, what, five years fighting 
But uh, like I, I, I've been saying it before, that beautiful uh, uh, Emilio Wilson uh, Park and Orwell, you're going to see in, in six months, they're going to probably say again, well, Teo didn't explain it again well. Just like the boardwalk and everything else I do, I didn't explain it well. For some reason, I'm, I'm never good at explaining um, projects and that. But that might be one of the only um, good points that will we'll say that uh, we have to show in, in terms of something new happening in St. Martin. But to get other projects going on the island, too, again, to bring back some of this tourism, because trust me, it isn't anymore about the, uh, the shopping and the beaches. Mm. All these other islands now have the same shopping, because what they did, uh, those same islands, their governments came, spoke to our merchants, had meetings with our merchants, and have offered them much uh, better tax ex um, incentives, much better um, procedures there. Uh, they ain't got no problems of um, the prosecutor showing up at 4 o'clock in the morning, grabbing you, and, and things like that. So, you know, um, why not invest in, in those countries? And that's what's happening. And you are seeing a, a, a fair um, like I'm saying, in, in terms of the margin, you don't see no major project. Or well, I'll give you an example. My cousin, okay, um, used to run the uh, project, um, the marina in Puerto Cupacoy, okay? And before, um, uh, when the, the company, what is it called, uh, Orient Express owned Puerto Cupacoy before they sold it um, to, the, to the group that was there. When my cousin's contract five years um, was, you know, up more or less, you know, it wasn't renewed. So my cousin came to me and said, hey, well, you know, he, he's without a job. He's always worked in the marina business. Um, would we be willing to, uh, you know, try and help him with a, with a dock down in the Simpson Bay area? It took my cousin one and a half years or uh, to get his building permit. He spent close to $30,000 um, having to develop a, um, a, a, a drainage plan from the airport to the bridge that not even big um, 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 major companies have to uh, do that. He had to do that. He went through more criticism and all of that. And only just recently uh, that permit was um, signed off. I have to thank the, the former minister, um, Mr. Myers, for, for, for um, finalizing that. Here's a local, mm. okay, um, a family member of mine, but that's why I say anything that comes by family request, and this isn't um, for land or anything like that, a building permit that you pay for, and it's not um, something, again, foreigners get it. Everybody gets the building permits, but if you're family to me, if you're known to support me, or anything like that, it seems that no one can get contracts. You can't even get your own building permit. Okay, um, so I go to a party some um, um, time for the Christmas. They say, "Man, Theo, were you best of friends with the government?" I say, "Me? What did I get?" I say, "But we hear that the government give you all a bunch of land and that." I say, "Land? Hmm. I say you mean a building permit?" I said, "By rights, you get a building permit for your house. You get a building permit for the building." I said, "That's it. You think that it is it is right that the, the nonsense that." always continues to be screwed up in my, in, in my name, sewed up in my name, continue to do that. And this is what is con continuing to come out. But I understand that um, there's a problem now with uh, the current government mm -hmm. because of uh, parliament and so forth. Are you going to support the government uh, to make a quorum? Well, you know, or let me tell you, before I'm um, coming here this evening, Mm. Um, I think after 5 o'clock, uh, we received an email for convocation of a meeting for tomorrow, okay? Friday. Now, let's go over um, the, basically, the laws that are, are there. If you are a sitting minister and you become a member of parliament, you have three months to relinquish one of the seats, okay? I'm very sure Mr. William Allen, Mr. Silveria Jacobs, and Mr. Emmy Lee, that's who really it applies to, because Gibson didn't have a seat in Parliament. Those three could have given up before the three months ended and brought in new members within Parliament before they didn't do so. 
No problem. Let's go over who of the coalition is sitting in parliament representing the coalition. Ms. Westcott of the Democratic Party, Franz Richardson, Sylvia Matzo, and Mr. Brownville of the USP Party, and Mr. Ardwell, and Mr. Samuel of the National Alliance. That's six members of the coalition. Now, you call an urgent meeting of parliament. You know you don't have enough for quorum, okay? You know that um, you have an issue to deal with. You know, rushing through this 10 then 10, and we basically agreed to all these sometimes what I would call very crazy laws to make 10 10 10 come true. One of our biggest mistakes, I believe, um, at 10 10 10. And now you need the support of the same party that you didn't even have the decency to say, hey, Theo and the members of the UMP, this is the reason why we throw you to the co op side. And uh, there was no discussion on how we can fix the problem. But now you expect me to show up to Parliament tomorrow, loo -de -doo -de -doo -de -doo, walk in and fix your issue. I don't think it goes so easy like that. Or else. And I'm, I'm, I'm quite um, tired of hearing all the time that I must be for Sir Martin and no one else must be for Sir Martin. When have the issue with the budget? It's not my government, but why must I always have to be called upon to help them solve their problems? And when you have problems in the country, you never involve us. You never involve us in the discussion on what do we see um, part of the budget. You ram through laws that are no good for the country, hardly time to um, discuss, hardly time to really um, um, delve into the matters and we are proving all kind of things that are now hurt in the country, and now you want to get your parliamentarians in. So I will tell you this one, Oral. Um, we have a meeting tomorrow with the faction, um, prior to the meeting of parliament, and we will discuss. I will, I will tell you this one. I mean, I know that uh, the new parliamentarians um, come in. Um, I think if they can show us that um, they have the present six um, that are there as parliament, if they have the present six, I can see us, you know, doing the right thing for the country. But if you can't even show me that you have your own six um, to go into parliament, why even call a meeting that you can't even show that you have a full strength of your own coalition? That you always have to rely on the up. But then why is up not part of the coalition then? Because you always seem to need up members to support you, so then make us part of government. So you, you're saying that uh, if Six members are present tomorrow. You might consider at least. Give and maybe um, a call from when I want something passed in Parliament, motions. That I go and I ask for help in doing that. Or the government knows it does not have um, majority for tomorrow's meeting, but yet you call a meeting, and you don't call uh, my person or even if you don't want to speak to me, I'll call another member of parliament uh, from the up faction, because I notice uh, nobody likes speaking to me anymore. Um, call one of them, and hey, let us um, come to the table, and what is good for Sir Martin should be good for Sir Martin. No problem. But I think that the, we represent a large portion of the population, yeah. and we just can't continue doing these things blindly anymore. But this, this is the, the the government is approaching a crisis situation right now. Well, let me tell you something. This government, um, and I could tell you straight, if you look mm. at what each of the three parties that are supporting the government, okay, and I, and I, and I see it more and more, uh, in particular when it comes to um, certain ministries in there, that they do not um, support certain projects, especially from the two minority parties, I would consider. It is basically uh, one uh, party getting everything and doing everything that it wants. Hey, I wish them all the luck. Um, we will see how far that continues to go, because that one party has one policy, and that has always been anti-business, um, anti-economy, 
and um, you know more in pro. I mean, le listen, let's go back a little bit in history, and uh, now I'll bring up the fact that you being a, a supervisory member on GB, one of the most powerful and important companies of the country. Okay, the millions that they've taken out of that company is not going to be reflected, but actually it is being reflected today, but it's going to be hurt even more in the future when that company cannot keep up um, with the demands of the country when it comes to electricity, not being able to buy new engines because you took all of this um, cash out of the company. And I do blame um, um, uh, management and, and, and probably maybe the, the, the farmer board for not spending the money because GB itself needs a lot of new water lines being replaced could have helped all of that millions that were taken out of the company, could have helped spur the economy forward, giving small contractors work. In addition, something the National Alliance, every time that they got up and we discussed projects on the island, gave the people relief. Not one cent, not one cent was given back to the community in relief in electricity prices or water price reduction. But you took millions out of the company to basically balance your budget. That isn't what I call balancing the budget. You're, you're basically bankrupting a company. And I'll tell you, people always complain about um, um, Telem. And I'll tell you something, I am one of those that support Telem um, to the max. And it is because, okay, uh, our National Alliance-led government as well took out 30 million out of Telem, made Telem go for a loan uh, to pay dividends. Up to today, Telem has never caught back itself, okay? And I'll tell you something, or we would have had um, a much better um, um, telecom service have government not taken out the monies. Before, it used to be the same Dutch telling you you must have hands-off approach when we were in government. The same National Alliance was saying to the harbor, you shouldn't spend on helping um, um, fix roads in Dutch Quad, uh, in, sorry, in um, South Ward, in St. Peter's, in Phillipsburg, and things like that, but we're providing jobs for people in St. Martin. You could have seen where the money was being spent. Today, now, it just goes into government, and no worry. I think, what, close to 30 million has been um, taken from GB over the last few years. Or all. This is ridiculous, 30 million. Now the company has to go and take a loan to buy new generators and that. Well, a loan costs the country money because where you're going to recoup the money from? From, um, from the population. Now I heard the, the last one, and, and, I, and I intend to uh, question government about that. I understand that um, some new contract is also being looked upon. Where, what is it? They're going to turn, um, put water into the fuel or something like that. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see that, because in the, the last time we were in government and we were looking to sign MOUs about bringing in um, LPG and LNG to the island um, to fuel the new generators that would have eventually come, oh, that was a big discussion in parliament. Well, guess what? I'm going to make it a big discussion if this MOU is signed as well. I only have one minute, so it's all yours to close. Well, Oral, um, once again, um, thank you. And, 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 and like I said, uh, I'm very happy to um, um, be on your program. Uh, you know, I say to the Saman people, I love them. I, um, uh, you know, want to continue to, to do the things, but we as a people have to come really together and make sure we stand up strong um, together and, and, and be the ones for the Samaritan people and, and actually work together. And don't let outside forces destroy um, our great island. And with that, I tell them I love them. God bless and thank you very much. Well, thank you, MP Halligan. Again, I want to extend and wish you and your family all the best for CR 2017. All right? Thank you. That's it for now. I'll see you next time. Tell them good night. Take care.